All right, so I'm in this trade over here, and um, basically what I was doing was um, I took a couple of different entries. Uh, so I entered right here, and then I also entered down here, right here. Um, I guess I could show you, um, I don't know why it's like marking like that, uh, I think there's a bug with the, um, expert advisor I was testing, but anyway, yeah, so I entered here, I was not, you know, really thinking it was going to go down to there, but I guess I should have been, obviously, but, um, so then, when I didn't enter, uh, where was it, here, and I saw it go down to there, I was like, okay, I'll just buy two more, and that's it. And then what I did was, since I'm doing this challenge, basically, um, with the fiber, oh shit, but that's fine, um, you actually can't see the password, so that's good, um, but anyways, yeah, since I'm doing this challenge right here, and we can actually see, um, Here's all the rules and everything. Um, so the target is 8%, which is uh, 400. For the step one, step two is 5%. Which I'm, I need to actually look that up uh, or figure that out. Because uh, basically we could do it real quick. Uh, So, 5,000 times 8% is 400. Okay, that's our day one goal. 5,000 times 5% equals 250. That's our, uh, did I say day one? I meant uh, phase one, and that's our phase two goal. Unlimited uh, time limit there. Um, 5% daily loss, 10% maximum loss, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, what, this is not what this video is about. This video is about, uh, I'm going to get to in a second. But, uh, anyway, yeah, I'm doing this challenge. So I'm trying to figure out what my risk is, basically, because I have these two positions ignore that that's not me that's some that's a it thinks that I still have the expert advisor plugged in and I don't otherwise it would show right here but anyways um so I was trying to figure out what my risk is since since some some people might say well you should put your stop loss for this entry right here you know and uh, some other people would say, well, you need to put all your stop losses right here and, and whatever. And people were going to say different stuff, but I just put them all down here. And I said, well, I said, if I'm going to do that, I, I at least want to know what the risk is. So I said, let me calculate from here to here and from here to here. And uh, I know I'm just dragging this on, uh, but here's the two positions up here, okay? Let's take a look at those. So they're right here. That's the risk. $30.50 times two. And I'm just showing you this to give you an idea of basically um, ignore these. These are just uh, other levels where I had stop losses um, before, but uh, could just ignore these actually I 
do that or move this up to give us a little better view of the God's eye right here. Um, but yeah, just a real simple, this is my um, current take profit right here. This is my uh, stop loss right there, okay. And then, um, yeah, I just did the calculations. Just check on that real quick, uh, make sure it's still good. But basically, those, so my bottom two positions are these. Okay, so my risk was $15.75 for this with that stop loss. T times three, because I took three of those positions right here. One, two, three. Okay, so I just figured out what that was. That's $47. This is my what's called actual risk. Actual risk and then potential reward so and that's really the, the truth about it you know and it um, we have actual risk when we enter a trade but we, we we only really have potential reward right so um, I don't know why that's not usually it's supposed to on MacBook. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, but yeah, so up here, and then for these two positions, it's thirty dollars and fifty cents times two. These two up here, and the risk is thirty dollars and fifty cents times two, which is sixty one dollars. And uh, 61 plus 47.25 is um, 108.25. And then uh, potential reward, that's my actual risk. Potential reward is um, what I did was I just calculated, uh, I just took, let me get that off of there. It's so looking bad. Um, what I did was I just took what I, what I, the kind of the average of what I wanted to make. I only need 400, but because I have, there's this rule, there's that rule of um, doing the three days. Right here, minimum profitable days, three. You have to have at least made a positive profit of 0.5% uh, of the initial balance, which is 5,000, so 5,000 times 0.5% equals 25. So what I said was um, all in all, I want to get about 450, but since these are separate, I said, let me take kind of a little bit less, let's say 425 in the calculator so what I did was and they were and it made sense at the time I got five positions so I need a total of 85 and that's where I got ended up getting this 85 right here as my potential reward target for these top these top two positions here and uh, obviously these are lower so that was my thinking was um because i knew these were going to be more and because this was going to be where i was going to set my initial i said let me not make it my target let me make it a little bit less than my target because i know with three of these positions i'm going to be making significantly more but i said well how, but how much is that so i didn't know at the time until i calculated this so I did my three original positions, potential profit of where, and this is kind of like, not really like 
like obviously like ICT would be like okay take your take parcels here and here and here and wherever um but you know remember he teaches that um he teaches that when you have a low and something goes to the high I don't have this set let me uh delete this and go to uh Yeah, we got to watch that level right there. Um, that's a key level right there. It's a big level. It's a very significant level. So you got to keep an eye on that, um, what's happening at that level. But if it breaks down below there, let me just go to here. Let me go to 15 minute. Uh, so messy. Hold on. Uh, this is just like uh, the daily range. I was calculating daily range, um, average, true daily range or whatever. Um, but ICT. Michael Joe Huddleston, he teaches that um, you could find your profit targets in such a way as this. That, and we see this key level up here too, so we could look for potential area here for price to definitely make sense uh, for it to come up to but basically it's a uh, what does he call it um, you know it's a symmetrical price swing which is very very common in the markets in other words if this breaks this high it should go this distance here swing up you know, and that's our projection for a reaction, like a bearish reaction once it gets up there. It could happen here, here, and definitely will happen here. So let's mark that level real quick with just... Um, so I have nothing on the charts here. Um, that's because I haven't loaded my template in. 2750. 27500. That's, uh, we already have that marked. So I'm well below, I'm well below this. And let me just do, do that there. That fixed our problem that we had earlier. As you can see, now I can show you what actually happened. I entered these two positions and then I entered here because I was like, okay, I missed this move. And the idea behind that move was simply this range, which is something that I learned from not just a trade, YouTube channel um i'm sure ict teaches it uh, somewhere or something i guess it's like maybe it's an order block or something but whatever i said boom i said look at how i turned around right there i said well you know if it goes back down there i said i, don't, I might i might take another position i just sort of took a chance so i entered here but once it got back above here i was like okay let me just get out of these two because i don't want that much risk right so that's kind of what I was thinking. But um, now back to what I was saying about profit target. Now, if I was trading for real with real money, I would probably take partials right here. And um, 
maybe even up to like 50% off the trade, uh, you know, or something. And then I, I uh, don't have the fib set up, but like this level right here, it used everything in conjunction. So I would be using this Fibonacci alongside these quarter levels to find areas to take partials like so like right here would be a great place right here and then obviously right here close full yes it will probably take out this double top up here and who knows what may happen after that it could come back down but uh with the interest rates being lowered this later this year that means the dollar will be going down this year and then uh, the pound should be going up so we are bull i am bullish on the pound all year long and probably going into 2025 as well but um yeah so but for the purposes of passing an evaluation um let's mark what what we can do is take our um, take profit 27317 okay what are we what is that uh, 20 one, two, seven, seven, 27, yeah, right there, and mark it on here, okay, just to see where it is, and I will leave it as red, uh, but a little bit thicker, because... I want it to stand out a bit on the chart. I don't want to be like any confusion as to what, what it is. When I visually glance at it, I want to know, okay, boom, I know what that is exactly. And you could do um, you dash it or dot it just to differentiate. Um, but I'll leave it as a line, line because I have... I, I have key levels that are marked as uh, dash, uh, red dashes, but they're, they're extremely huge, uh, so you very rarely see them. It'd be like the uh, hundred thousand or the even the million sometimes uh, key levels. If you don't know what I'm talking about with that, it's, it's quarter theory. I've got lots of videos on that. But anyway, um, yeah. So this is all we need for the challenge. And interestingly enough, so if you, if you go, this is how I do, if you go to the daily, this is called average true range. Average true range. And um, if you look on the left over here, you know, it's going down right now, but it could, it could also... You know, if you think of it in terms of, like, you know, market structure or st just even the structure of, of this, it goes up and down, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, um, but right now, we are here. I usually just go down to like the nearest sort of round number, kind of. So I'm like looking at like 900, but I'd definitely say 900 would be safe. Anything you're trying to take profit, um, for sure 900 would be, seems like that would be reasonable on a, on a big day, a decent sized day. Um, so if we mark that here, we can get it exactly right there. Nine hundred is Are you O C D like I am? Leave a comment if you're OCD, like me. 
Are you ADD and OCD like me? Because I'm ADD and OCD. And probably a whole bunch of other alphabets. Um, except for one of them. Which I won't talk about here. So anyway, this is roughly what we're looking at. A little trick if you want to... Um, so you can look at the low, which is 1.26861. If you want to just get this out of the way, 1.26861, and then that should be, yeah, right there. Actually, you can do it. You can do it by just looking at that too, it's whatever. But then, just adjust this. Obviously it's not important to get it perfect, I'm just... Yeah, yeah, like Michael says, my OCD's flaring up. <laughs> I really do like Michael Joe Huddleston. I'm, he's a great guy, you know. I enjoy listening to him. I enjoy learning from him. It just sometimes takes a long time, you know, to to go through all the videos. It just it just takes time, you know. That's all it is. You just have to just submit the time. But anyways, yeah. So what I was gonna, well, the reason why I did all that was to show you exactly the halfway point is right here. You see that arrow there? This is exactly the halfway point. And what happens at the halfway point of the daily range or the average true daily range, I, I, they have an ADR, which is an average daily range, and they have um, average ATR, which is average true range indicators, right? But the, I found that the average true range is better for me. I, I just, I don't, I haven't really tested the ADR that much. But I, I think I did look at it, and it didn't, didn't seem as accurate to me as um, the average true range. But I, you, all you doing you have to do is go to the daily. So you go to the daily, and you look at the average true range for the daily, and then that's boom, you got it. So, but what happens at the halfway point? Almost every time, if you if you if you pay attention, um, is it there's a strong reaction? You know, maybe it's not like you know a massive. It's not always a massive reaction, but it's usually you get some kind of reaction. Um, and it just so happens that that is right around my take, right around my take profit. So what I'll do is I'll see how much volume we have going into it, like on the one minute. Um, and if I feel like it definitely will get hit, then I'll leave it. If not, as long as I get you know, a decent, you know, um, hopefully I can get a decent way, ways above 400, like 450-ish would be probably good enough. The reason I do that, or I try to do that, is to give me some cushion so that when I'm going for the $25 on the second and third day, assuming, assuming that I make... 400 on the first day or more um, then that gives me a little cushion to go in and try to get the 25 on the um, other day other days now just looking at this you you might say well Okay, we took out liquidity here. We're coming up here. We broke this high here. You know, we could get... Uh, what do you call a... Um, kind of a bounce back down into that and then go up. Or, you, or some people might say, well, we have a lower low here. So then this is an order block. But it's already been reacted up into here. See? It's already been tapped once, and it came all the way back up above, above that, and now we're already halfway. 
up into there and there is this this white level is a I call it a I call it a half quarter just because from here to here is a quarter because 2700 to 27 250 that's a quarter level and so this I just call it a half quarter that's not as that's not as strong as this and you might say okay we're maybe we're headed up to take out all this liquidity right here um you know i think that's sell side if i'm not getting confused um because when they're when a seller's selling and they get stopped out, let's see, when a seller's selling, they put a buy stop. So I don't know, maybe that's buy side liquidity. I'm not sure. I, I forgot. But anyway, whatever. There's liquidity up here. Okay, and then so you might say, well, it's just it might just sweep that and go down. True. If you're just looking at that, but when you zoom out a bit. On a larger scale, let me delete this. And um, I know this is not like we didn't make a higher high here, but there is this range right here. And I feel like that that could be, you know, what we're racking up out of. Just kind of based on um, what I learned at not just a trade. Um, but there is also liquidity up here. You'll have to forgive me if I mark it incorrectly. Um, but I think that's... No, no, that's buy side because you know how I know? Because when I made it at the time, I put the, I put the, for the, the one that goes up, up high, I put the letters on the top. You notice that? Watch this one, see? The letters will switch up high. Next option price jumps warns of US CPI risk. There's always so much news that comes on trading view, it's crazy. Yeah, so anyway, there's liquidity here, but really when you look at it on the higher time frame, it doesn't even look that it doesn't even look that good. You know what I mean? Like this looks much juicier. This is a much bigger stake right here. You know, for for large institutions or whatever. Okay. So anyway, um back to what I was saying earlier um about all this and stuff yeah so I just basically this is my initial positions and this is my uh, top two positions and then I add them together to get my uh, take profit or uh, potential reward and then I said okay I need to figure out what is the it's obviously four to one or something but what is I was wondering like what is the what would that what does that look like in a real fraction you know so I found this calculator soup very easy name website to remember um yeah so plug in the uh, big number and then the small number and then you get it's basically four to one but it's like you know like four four and a quarter to one 
See what I'm saying? So that's like the risk, the reward to risk ratio. People always say risk to reward, but then they put the big number first, which is actually the reward. So actually what they meant to say was the reward to risk ratio, but they don't think about what they're saying and they don't think about the meaning of words like, and like the order of things. Like they're not, they don't use their OCD to their full potential, you know, if they, if they have a OCD at all. But that is, um, that's what I did. And that was the whole, only reason I made this video. I didn't make this video. I did not make this video consciously to show off the trade uh, consciously I made this video to show uh, how I calculated basically um, what do you think should we make all that bold to show how I calculated the risk. And the thing about it is, is if if you don't calculate the actual risk, especially when you take multiple positions like this, you don't really know how much you're risking. There's a cool tool, and I'm gonna put it on the Euro because I don't want to make uh, a mess on the... Uh, a chart that I'm actually trading, but there's a cool tool I want to show you. I don't think I have it. Uh, well, yeah, I don't have it on here yet, but just go to navigate. I think, can you, uh, scripts, objects. I think you have to, I think you have to go into the, um, Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta go into the navigator. But anyway, try right here. Oh shit, hold on. This one. So, this is a cool thing where you have to, uh, you can put in your risk that you want to do. So, a good risk for this 5%er challenge would be like, uh, like per position risk. In other words, uh, you know, I had one position, and then later on, I took another position after it showed a willingness to go higher, right? And then, and then you enter in like at another pullback, but like per position risk for this challenge should probably be somewhere around the, around this right here, if you're doing it right, um, ish. But just for the sake of format, I usually just put in like ten for a stop loss, and then fifty. Just for the visual aesthetic that it, that it creates. So what happens is, if I say, okay, I want to go long, okay, boom, okay, well, that's not. Um, it looks cooler on the on the when you do it like on the one minute when it's down low. See, but let me show it on the 15 minute real quick, and you could change the the stuff so you could put 100 500 okay and if you said all right i want to go long here you see how it kind of pops up like that and then what you could do is actually reduce the size of it um okay I'm trying to remember oh percent of percent of balance yeah and then okay so here's where it gets a little tricky uh, 
Actually, just do the panel size uh, medium. I think I think it's fine. Uh, let me let me try. Let me try. I can't remember exactly. Long. It starts cutting off. Yes, yeah, so you have to change the font size. Okay. Font size. Uh, small. Line size medium. Let's try this. I think small is not going to work, but yeah, it's, it cuts off your lot size, which is the whole reason for using this in the first place. So, go to, or I wonder what this would be. Hold on, let me try this. I don't, I don't think I've tried this setting before. Let me try. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah. No, not that. Medium. That's we're going to have to just do it like this. Whatever. It's fine. The only pr the problem what I'm trying to fix is uh the fact you have to move this over to be able to see anything. And then you like you miss out on a lot of territory over here, but uh, whatever you can do about. But yeah, so let's say we had a key level. What what's, would be a a key level that we would target on this? Uh, be for the euro. I don't know. Let's say you're. Just wanting to just target this for, for today. I don't know. Whatever. This is not financial advice. But I just need a level. I need a level on here. Okay, that's yellow. Okay, there's that level there. Let's say you want to take an entry here. And you want to put your stop loss way down here. But even though that's a terrible, terrible risk to reward, right? Watch this number here. Okay, you only want to risk $23, right? Ish. Okay, now you can you can enter more higher lot size there, see? Now if you were to enter down here, right? Let's say you put your risk down here and you would have really got a nice entry down here, right? So per position you could go like two point seven sorry, two point zero sevens if you wanted to enter on a double tap, you know, and keep your risk per position at 0.5%, remember? Right here. Okay, and then, you know, your, your reward is whatever. It's, you could change it. Um, but uh, that would be if you really wanted to get granular with it, you know, you take it down, each position would be like a quarter, a uh, quarter percent, right? Assuming this is for two positions, but you could take, uh, 
Yeah, I would I would break this up into two positions. I would not. Oh no, actually, hold on. No, this yeah, this would be fine actually. Yeah, this would be fine. Because over here, I'm I'm, you know. Point two five over here, so and I you know I haven't really mastered the thing about um, I, I'm sure it, maybe it might exist where you could uh, figure out exactly what my risk is as far as um, I guess you could do that with a calculator, right? Um, you could say whatever the percentage is, right? If I'm risking this, okay. So let's just see, let's see. Okay. Um, let's do something real easy. One thousand times 10%, right, is 100. 1,000 divided by 100 is 10, right? Okay. Okay, so if we did 5,000 divided by this number, Forty-six. I don't know. That doesn't seem right. But anyway. Uh, spell checker. Import, export, other ways to arrange customers your notes. Find a sticky note service and application. Help find more by using stickies. Yeah, this is how you do it. What percent of five, sorry, hold on, five thousand is, wow, okay.
Okay, very nice, very nice. Uh, so this is what uh, my actual risk equals, okay, two point, um, Okay, so the question is this. Okay. Yeah, so my actual risk is 2.17%. You see, this is the stuff that, that I need to be calculating every single trade in order to understand exactly what I'm doing to get clarity to know exactly what I'm doing and it puts emphasis and importance on really the severity of a trade. You know, knowing what your actual risk is in terms of dollars and percent and you know, I, I, I did use this tool actually um, it gave me a general idea before I placed this trade and I didn't get it on recording but whenever I placed the first position I did have this tool on my screen and uh, I think I had it set for 1% and it was giving me somewhere and I know I have this set for 0.5% uh, I was saying that was for one position but I had mine set for 1% and um on here and it was saying like 0.8 or something like that um, so I was just gonna put in two positions here and then I ended up uh, putting in three positions here two positions there and then one more but it went down lower and then it went down really low and then I said no no more for now it came up obviously I already would have talked about that earlier that one but um yeah and it's nice it's really nice to know I'm glad I figured out okay so I'm talking I know I'm talking um looks like we now on here there's the liquidity is up here on this one so if if this is like if the euro is going to take out liquidity right obviously there's this there's all this But, like, then there's this. Um, my computer's kind of being laggy, sorry. Because I'm recording. But, you know, and then you have, you know, these up here. But uh, I want to go to the pound. Yeah, see, so... I have it marked up here but it just doesn't look that significant when you look at it on the hourly when you look at it right here it's like oh yeah look at those two highs for sure uh, this is in the 15 minute right here um, yeah so it looks pretty um, significant on and from this view but you just have to back up a little bit and you see that I we're probably going to target this up here um, I think what will happen is it, it will push up into here hopefully hit my take profit push up into this halfway point of the average true daily range and then um, 
basically, uh, what do you call, retrace. And then in New, New York, there'll probably be a big... Uh, now, tomorrow is CPI, so we have to keep remember that. Um, but, you know, there could be a big continuation in New York and a push up to here, or at least in this general vicinity, and then maybe CPI potentially could whip and wipe out all this liquidity if you look even over here look at this it just keeps coming doesn't it so anyway if we if 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 the new york session today pushes up to this level right here, consolidates the rest of the day and all night on this level, and then maybe CPI might might whip up above here and wipe out all this liquidity, and, and then we'll see if it wants to continue down. Um, but don't forget to zoom out to see, you know, what's really going on. I mean... That structure is bullish right there. So keep going. We desperately, desperately need to take off this. And we don't even really need that right now. But you look at this, you're like, oh man, what? That's, that's uh, quite a ways back. My computer is really lagging. And it's, it's really, everything's super messy. So let me uh, hide everything. Keep an eye on that. And we're just looking at extra super duper long term kind of in a downtrend, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's definitely a downtrend. So, you know, I'm not an expert uh, yet, but hopefully one day. Um, we just don't want to lose sight of The big picture, it's just like a lot of highs up, up in here, you know, and right, all this, and maybe even this and this, maybe it might push up, while it's up here, just push up above there, and especially with the dollar being bearish, you have to remember where we are in terms of sentiment for um, the interest rates and are people going to be pulling their money out of the dollar to uh, invest it um, somewhere else? If the interest rates go down for the for the United States, that's you know, that's what will happen because people, when interest rates go up, they in the United States they people buy the dollar because they want to get interest on their money, so they let it sit with interest, high interest, and then you know they're making whatever five percent right now. They're making 5%, and uh, and let me uh, get back down to ground level here. Yeah, I mean, I can see, I can see us definitely pushing up above here and above here. If 
for now, let me zoom back out. So the four hour candle closes in 37 minutes. The one hour closes in obviously 37 minutes. Um, so what I wanna do real quick is I wanna look at the dollar. Okay. I want my levels back. Okay, so we pushed down below this level that's very good. Okay, and there's not another level for a little while until we get down to there, so that's very good. Now let's go here. Real quick, let me peek at the Euro. We're at a level here on the Euro, but we could easily take out this liquidity real quick uh, before some kind of retracement, which uh, I haven't done the daily range for the Euro yet, but it falls right in line with uh, the expected uh, pullback from the halfway point that we're almost at. Now, we're at this level, which does coincide with the, uh, near the halfway point, um, so, you know, we kind of got to watch out. We should probably watch out for that. Um, so, yeah, I could just go ahead and just take profits now and be good to go. Um, but uh, I don't see any reason why we, we shouldn't get a, a little push. Uh, you know, it's, um, especially now that we broke this level, we're kind of kind of cruising up. Um, that is, I think, an old level I'm not sure what that is I'll take that off um, we're looking for it to go up to this halfway point of the average daily range um, but sometimes you get to keep the perspective of all three of these to see what they're kind of doing and you can look at lots of other assets as well just keep the time frames consistent. Like, it should all be the same time frame. Uh, so there's no confusion with one going up and one going down. Because one's on a 15 minute, one's on a one minute. Or visually speaking. Uh, Okay, so here's the reason why we look at all three of these, because we can imagine that the dollar will push down to this level here, which will push these up a little bit. Um, I think, you know, probably safe to say the dollar is usually leading the way. Um, so here we have some people taking profits. Uh, are taking at least partials. It could just be a little small little retest of this level right here. And even this little inversion level here. So it could just bounce right up off of that and go up a little bit. Of course, you know, we could just go ahead and retrace right now, which would uh, obviously extend our time in trade, depending on how far it retraces, if it, if it decides to do that now. Um,
Okay. And if it does go up, we'll get we should get a little strong little push, you know, uh, which would basically be correlated with this push down here. Um, but you know, we do. It's like you say, well, okay, you get two people against one, <laughs> and it's not funny like now because I'm in this trade, whatever. But um, if you have two things, the pound and the euro which are correlated right at a key level, and you have the dollar, which is in no man's land, then, then who's in control at that point, right? There, you know, it, it could be some significance to these two being at a key level. So, nevertheless, the dollar is still in charge and still is in command. So if the dollar wants to go down to this level real quick, that's where it's going. Everyone else is gonna have to follow, so. The dollar leads the way, as they say. Rangers lead the way. My dad, my dad was a airborne ranger. Um, yeah, we were. At, I was at 405, so I, I hit my target, but that that would not have left me any cushion for the next two days. I know that sounds like well, I sound stupid to some people, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. So I know I have this inversion level drawn here. Um, not just a trade would probably just draw this like range box and just call this a range because of their concepts that they use. Um, it's however, however you want to however you want to do it. I mean it's whatever. Um, but uh, this would be like you could call it supply demand order block. Whatever. For now, we'll just put that. And if you don't like it, whatever. It's what I've got for right now. It's just a block. I'll take the text off if it makes you happy. Same, same kind of thing here. You can see a little bit. Uh, I don't know which one you'd want to use. It's not really as clear. That's usually, it's like, it's it's great. Um, I like using both of these, you know. It's great to have something. Like when you're trading NASDAQ, you can use like the S&P and the US 30. It's like the Dow Jones. Um, you know, it's just, it's, sometimes you can use two together. Certain, certain, uh, Certain assets are correlated, you know, like really closely. And these two repairs are great, you know, for that. So, okay, so we have a nice little bump there. Really nice. It was, it was tempting just right there just to close it. It's just you have to ask yourself, what is this consolidation all about? You know, they're probably... I'm kind of a little bit making this up, just kind of repeating what I've heard because I don't fully understand it but they say that you know they're accumulating orders in here and stuff like that why well there's this level down here I keep talking about okay and equal lows right here
So in my imagination, I, I see this thing exploding down right here. And then these following to the upside, uh, at least a little bit, right? So I'm not saying it's gonna get all the way up to there, but I'm looking for this to kind of explode down here. With these uh, following in the opposite direction. So I'll uh, I'll just bolt close probably um, unless unless it unless I feel like it's gonna hit for sure. So news wise we just have oil later today at 10:30 and then the 10 year auction note which is significant And there's another range right here which it you know could or should react up off of it and you know there's this range right here which it hasn't broken above yet but when it does that would be significant because probably because this key level is right there at the top of it and I just think that this wants to go down like, I could be wrong. Obviously, I could be wrong. And, you know, I could eat my shorts, but... <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, it'll be alright. There it is. There it is, right there. Let's go. Where are we at? Let me, uh, where is that? The halfway point we we're talking about. It's up there near where my levels are, so we're not quite there yet to the exact pip or uh, point. Uh, but we're pretty close. Whew, a little wick there. Yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be it. It's going to be it. Um, not bad. It could keep going up. Like, I, I don't know. But, um, I don't want to risk it. After this, if you see this, and then you saw this right here, I'm like, I don't know, man. You know, I don't want to sit through a, a six hour retracement or, you know, like, 
maybe the retracement sometimes could like you could be waiting to get back to this point like and it might never get there you know what i mean like if i hadn't taken profits right there in other words we could retrace back down and it, and it might not even get back up here until like in some cases like tomorrow i know i said that the plan in my mind of what would kind of make sense would be for them to take the market up here and then sweep that liquidity tomorrow yeah but when you're sitting there and you've got your target and it's right there in your hand and if i didn't take it and it retraced on me and i was waiting six hours or more <laughs> you know for that thing to to get back like I, i've been trading for a couple of years and then you know that that type of thing has happened so i'm thrilled um to close at 5422 it leaves me a little cushion not as much as i wanted but it leaves me a little cushion for the next couple of days um and especially since this is just kind of like an arbitrary it's not really a real level it's just a place that i have my calculations uh set and everything so um i just didn't want to risk if if this thing had closed down below and kept going i would have stayed in the position in other words in in, in this thing but because that wicked and because that wicked yes i've seen it so many times where it wicks like that and c continues to go down and it wicks like this continues to go up and that's fine but i didn't want to risk it you know so um you know and tomorrow uh, i could catch you know 50 bucks or something and and give myself or like whatever you know I could I could come out like tomorrow if I end like so tomorrow if I end up with see what I'm saying if I get $25 tomorrow I'll be close to 450 anyway see what I'm saying but that 22 is just the reason I wanted the 450 or the 460 or about 450 was just to give me a little cushion you see what I'm saying for the next couple of days but i still have that 22 dollars cushion and you know that's plenty for one day so if i go in tomorrow and and let's say worst case scenario i lose 22 dollars then what i could do is i could i could close i could close for the day close shop and then say okay i'm gonna wait and try again the next day right because i don't want just gonna keep i don't just want to keep going below 5400 see what i'm saying that's the whole point of the cushion was to stay above 5400 while i'm trying to get these other two days the 25 dollars that i need uh to complete the uh the phase one anyway uh yeah so that's the end of the video and uh hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully it was helpful and um yeah but just a little methodology just a little methodology to um figure out our risk to reward ratio which we also figured out our um, percent and the ratio
equals Oh bro What is that even? I think I think isn't that it? One one uh one four five over four three three one four five over four three three. Yeah. Risk percent equals Oh, you know what we could do? Uh, real quick, close out the video. Um, what our potential reward percent was? Oh, look at that. So, our potential reward was that rock chomp. Okay. 9.38. Our actual, what we actually got today, let's calculate that. We can actually, hold on. Uh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Actual. Oops. Okay. Oop, hold on. Actual reward. We calculate this. Woo! 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 <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh -wee. I'm not saying it can't go back up. I'm just saying I don't know when and I don't know how long it would take. Uh, yeah. But I'm glad I took profit. Oh, wow. Woo! 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 Look at that. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Now that's a trade right there, boy. All right. Um, we actually got four hundred twenty-two dollars even. Look at that. Four twenty-two even. Okay. So this is what we actually ended up with. Four twenty-two. We got eight point four four percent on the day. Not bad. That is not bad. Ask any trader that knows what they're doing, and that is really not bad. Wow, look at it go. But yeah, in one trade, I mean, I'm very, I'm extremely happy with 8.44%. Um, if you really want to put it in perspective, actual reward, uh, 
Actual reward. Four twenty two. Monetary value is 422. So that was our profit. Okay. Uh, or monetary value over actual reward. Okay. But if you want to put it in real perspective, you have to understand the rules of this thing right here. Daily loss limit is two hundred and fifty dollars five percent five thousand times five percent you're only allowed to lose two hundred and fifty dollars okay so now let's do some math okay this number okay is what percent of 250 this is how much we, we really made if you think of it in terms of what you actually have to work with. So what you actually have to work with every day on this account is $250. So it's basically like trading a $250 account for the day. If you, if you lose this amount of money on your account in the day, they close your account like forever. You have to buy another account you have to buy another challenge so if you consider um all this okay is in terms of five thousand right but if you consider it in terms of 250 okay then um actual reward okay is percent equals 168.8% on the day. That's our return on our investment. Like, if you think of it in terms of what you have, what you really have to work with with this account is $250. So because we took $250 and turned it into $422, that is a 168.8% increase in um, In, in our total what we started with so that is a hundred and sixty eight point eight percent increase from two hundred fifty dollars to four hundred twenty two dollars so that's pretty good so our return our return on two hundred fifty dollars is for the day one hundred and sixty eight point eight percent and you know that's 
that's what you want to be doing in trading. You know, you want to be doing numbers like that. Uh, the parameters that are set in place for accounts such as this, funded accounts and that, are set there to help you to learn how to manage your risk. So let me refresh this page. We can see our equity curve and our full amounts. So there's our equity curve. So a profit target for three days is uh, 422. We're currently registered uh, zero of three, but after 5 p.m. today, it's almost 5 a.m., but in 12 hours from now, really 13 hours, because it, it, it's like six o'clock when they finish, I think. Sometimes, there's been prop firms where they didn't have it up until 6 p.m., but anyway, a little over 13 hours from now, this will say one of three, and then I can go into my you know next trade and get my twenty five dollars. And so here we go. We're running back up, um, which I didn't really expect. I mean. I'm not surprised because we got we didn't finish off um, getting down into here. So um, and I do expect you know a run higher. Um, So we had a perfect reaction off of this right here. And it's not as clear right here, but that's why we use two, two pairs. Um, it's not as clear here. exactly what happened um, but yeah like you know this is the type of thing that you look for to buy it's not financial advice but you know obviously that would be a good spot right there so the question the only little bit of question is like I was just thinking, should I jump back in, try to get a little bit more off of this? I don't know. Probably not. I was busy talking instead of paying attention and seeing this explosion here. which coincides with this explosion here. And, you know, don't forget, we are expecting probably even a deeper retracement because we're at the halfway of the daily range. And it's not unreasonable to expect a deeper retracement, you know, uh, maybe down to this level here, could, it could be, or I don't know, that to me it seems a little deep. That seems a little deep, especially when you consider our goals for the day, our daily range goals. One more thing I'll mention, and 
you know, you, you guys, a lot of you guys know this, but ICT teaches that you look for the midnight open and what price does right after the midnight open. Usually it's a move in the opposite direction of the daily range. In this case, we went down. That's where I bought. And then we went up and then I sold. Um, but, uh, you know, that daily range, we have a little more ways to go. So, but it might not be until New York session that, that pushes it up to here. You see what I'm saying? We still have, it's only 6 a.m. We still have New York session could get a lot of work done in terms of moving price up in position into position for tomorrow's CPI right and I think we just had the three hour four hour candle close let me check yeah so that also can entail a possible retracement as well sometimes when you get a higher time frame candle close right after that sometimes you can see this is not financial advice okay but I'm uh, just talking but sometimes you can see a little retracement like as a perfect example is to just go and look on the daily you know uh, let's see close here we're going down but it retraced right after that boom you know we're going down this this close here we retraced and then went down right we're going up close here retraced went back up close here we're going up close here went way down and then back up see so right now I'm kind of glad to be out honestly honestly I'm kind of glad to be out of the trade already I'm, I'm relieved honestly that I'm already out so that doesn't mean that it couldn't <laughs> keep going up there's there's really it could definitely do that um, but if we see how the daily acts then we can reasonably assume that the four hour will be similar because it's obviously you could use the twelve hour, you could use whatever. Like let's 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 um look at um Here's a real good run. See how strong that run is? Let's go back to that. See how strong this run is right here? I want to find out what that looks like on the four hour real quick. So the four hour closed and it went down. Retraced at that spot unfortunately you have to go uh, why is it not showing do you have to go to the one one hour wait am I tripping Okay, but look what time. 4 p.m. Oh, I it's just going it just goes by itself. So you got to look for that 6 p.m. That's when the candle resets. So that that daily would have closed right here. up there and then it retraced down right
So that daily would have closed at the 5 p.m. right here. And then it went down right after that. See? So if we can look, what is the four hour candle we have? I guess that closed at 5 p.m. Let's go just one tick to the right. Yeah. Oh. You saw that. It went down and then up, right? Because that's what happens when you go to the two hour. You start to see it. One hour is more clear. Right here. Five o'clock. Or five o'clock closed. Went down and back up. So there's some evidence just in that one example. Obviously, you'd have to get a large sample set to really say that that's the way it is, but or the way it has been, but that would give us some evidence to expect possibly a retracement here. Okay, it looks like price exploded up into our target area. totally obliterated it obviously I wish I'd stayed in look at this wow that's crazy can't say I expected that now, in terms of our halfway point, where are we? We're up there. I mean, I, I wouldn't buy this for sure. I would not buy this. I mean, if it came, when it comes back down here for retracement on this key level, that's when I would look to think about buying. But. Yeah, that would have been nice. That would give me a lot of cushion right there. We would have had... Uh... 9.38% on the 5,000. That's crazy, look at that. Wow. Again, that's not really a level. That's just uh, that's just where I had my initial take profit. So don't be paying attention to that. So we got two out of three 
that are at the range now, this range, this range, even though this did not make it down to here, you know, it could be that these two are controlling the price, uh, which it would explain why this would stop short because if you have two, two forces acting upon one force, being that uh, you have the dollar trading against the pound, but you have the euro and the pound in correlation, so you have the euro and the dollar kind of con potentially controlling the pound, and sometimes you might have the pound and the dollar potentially controlling the euro depending on where everything is and what's going on, you know? Being content with enough. ICT talks about that. Being content with enough. So the way that ICT teaches it is that between five and seven, um, uh, supposedly it's slow, it's a consolid, consolatory time, you're not going to see that much explosion, um, you know, if you think about your, your times, of uh, sessions um, So Tokyo's closed at three. So then you have like between three, so around four, about four to seven or four to six, you know, you're kind of in between overlapping sessions, right? So you have, you know, heavy trading going on here, heavy trading going on here. And, you know, you have heavy trading in certain assets like the AUD, JPY, and whatever, right here. So, he was just saying sometimes it can be slow, you know, it, between like, you know, about 5 and 6, can, it can, you know, sometimes consolidate. Because the, the three, three biggest trading centers in the world are New York, London, Tokyo, and Sydney probably in that order. I mean, even though Canada is very heavily traded as well. Sometimes when you see a spike up on one that's, and you don't see a spike up on the other, you can buy that one. And, and sometimes it'll have just a delayed reaction.
I'm wondering if I should just if I should take another position it's tempting you know It's tempting, isn't it? I just need a second to see that level there. This would be our strong low here. The low of that candle is two seven two five three. The spread is anywhere from zero to five pips. Two five three. So I like to go eight, eight pits below, whatever that is. Risking more than I want to risk. But, you know, that's... 
that's the closest I could have it. You know, really down here would be the safer stop loss, you know. And right now what I'm really risking is turning this trade into either a long waiting game or just closing with a loss. That's kind of what I was expecting to see earlier, was it to go down into here, right there. and then go back up. Uh, you got to not be stupid. You got to be smart about what you're doing. Leave only one uh, on just in case it go like explodes up or something. Or I'll just leave those two on, I guess. Okay, now I've reduced my risk. Oh, 
Okay, I'm actually at the four, almost at the 450 mark. If I had to take profit there on everything, I probably would have. I think I was at 450. Uh, so I may just close. If we get another, another try up, I don't know. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm like so good with 450. That's kind of my goal. Like, so if we get another little pump up, uh, another try to go higher, and I hit that anywhere above that uh, 450 mark, I'm just going to close it. And my stop losses are like not in the right spot. I don't have that exact right now, but let's see. Low would be 27213. 27213. So that would be eight points right there. See, sometimes you get them behaving differently. So this one's going up, and this one's like going down. That one's going down. That's broke structure right here on the euro dollar. But right now, the pound is anticipating uh, a reaction off the dollar, off this level, to go higher, which is why that's going lower. But if this breaks, especially if this breaks this low here, then you can see an explosion here on the pound. If I've been paying more attention closer to my profit, I could have uh, go already closed this trade. But, you know, potentially, like I said, if this breaks this lower here, we could be even seeing even a higher high than what we just saw here. So, I don't know yet. I try to keep price in the middle so that my bias remains neutral neutral when I'm when I'm looking at the chart charts that way I can see both ways possibilities So you want to be able to, you want to see what price is doing very you know as clearly as you can so you don't want to have any biases uh, really obviously you want to try to formulate a monthly bias a yearly bias or 
a monthly bias, a weekly bias, a daily bias. Um, but, you know, all in all, you got to be ready for anything, you know, so. Yeah, I wish I had closed right up there. Closed all. That would have been sweet. Something was telling me to buy right there. I don't. But then it, then it was too late. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we broke we broke this little area right here. Um, Yeah, so obviously, obviously, when you get going faster, uh, it's harder to keep track of your trades. But you know, you want to try. Obviously, the idea is tr try to keep track, or at least get good at understanding your your risk, your actual risk to potential reward. You know, I think the more times you can do this analysis right here. Uh, the better understanding you know you can have overall of your actual risk versus potential reward so we're breaking this right here looks like not yet You want to kind of try to keep them all to scale so they look similar so you can follow uh, the price of all of them. So the most important thing is to have your stop loss set and then after that you can kind of think about where you want to take profits. Uh, obviously you should think about it ahead of time. Um, Is, is as best you can.
I, I, I just want to say, you know, I think some people, rightly so, you know, it, it's um, can be afraid sometimes, and myself included, uh, you know, to whether or not you should get back in the market or, or how long you should wait or what you should do. But here's the thing. It's a skill, right? And we're, you know, I'm trying to improve, right? And so I, I ought to be able to analyze, you know, and come to a conclusion and my skill ought to increase such that I could do that in an overall profitable way, you know, by the use of good uh, strategy, risk management, um, patience, watching, waiting, tracking. Watching, waiting, tracking. That's my new uh, trading view. Um, it used to be aggressive patience, but then I decided that I don't want to be aggressive anymore, <laughs> even if it's patiently aggressive, which was the whole idea. I was gonna have, I was gonna say patiently aggressive, like as my nickname on there. But I was like, you know what? I just don't want to be aggressive anymore. Like, I don't want that to be a part of my trading. You know, I want to, I want to be. The one who is watching, waiting, tracking, <laughs> you know. I'm laughing now, but we're going to have to see uh, if I get profits out of this. Again, there's this box right here. Um, you know, and you know that there's that YouTube channel, uh, not just a trade, and they talk about basically consolidation. What do they say? The expansion or the impulse or whatever, the retracement, and then like continuation. I didn't say it right, but that's basically the idea. So we're going to have to see what happens. Um, It just turned into a longer trade. Uh, hopefully, it'll work out. But I have to stay neutral. I can't be hoping. Because what that does... Hope is a great thing. In life, you have to have hope. You need hope to survive. Um, and faith and all that but you don't want to let that make you have a, a a bias that's like stubborn you know like you think well I think it's going to go up 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 and then something happens and because you're thinking so much that it's going to go up you don't see that what the market's trying to tell you about it's going down, <laughs> you know. So, like I said, that's why I keep these in the middle. Uh, and um, and that's what I was just saying about that. So, Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. 
I know. Why'd you do that? Well... Okay, so this is probably not good right now. Didn't work out for me, did it? 